So we're now going to create our surrealist background. We will need some A3 cartridge paper and we can decide to have it portrait or landscape. I'm going to have mine portrait and just like us experimenting and exploring background techniques we're going to have the same resources so we need a fresh water pot, a watercolour palette, quite a broad brush, a sponge, either a paper towel or some blue paper roll. So for our image it's going to link us closely to lockdown life. For me what stands out the most is going for walks most days because I don't have a garden at home and I recognise that we've actually had quite good weather. So it's going to be quite a sunny day and it's going to be a stroll through the park. So again, we need to think about our colours and the texture to make our background. And remember, just like our techniques, we are not putting too much detail in. We are just shading and blocking out our background. Okay, so I am going to do a bit of a soft gradient. I'm using my sponge and picking up some of the blues, some white, and I'm going to start going from one end to the other, just swiping to create the first layer of my sky. Add a bit more blue. So it's a bit richer here because I put more colour on. And then I'm going to have some greens because in the foreground here going to be the park where I've got the grass, the trees, the plants, etc. So we're just loosely thinking about the colour and the technique we're going to use. I'm going to use mine quite the gradient technique. And then I'm going to use my paper towel to add some texture for my trees after. So I'm just only go in the same way, move it down slightly, and we can let that layer dry before we add in any extra. And I quite like these textured lines as well. Remember to rinse the sponge each time. And the good thing with the sponge, as I said before, you get to coat large areas. Okay. So as a rough first layer, this is going to be my sky, okay, so that's the background. This middle section here is going to be the middle ground. So when I'm in the park, this is going to be where all the houses or anything I could see here. This down here is my foreground and I'm going to put some trees in here. But again, I'm not putting detail in, I am simply just using colour and texture. So again I'm using my sponge and because the tree is in the foreground remember it has to be quite big so I'm gonna just sponge some different colours and I haven't got much water on my sponge, but it's picking up the colour, the texture, which is quite nice. I'm 
just print them. It'll be darker at the top here. wetter my sponges the more it kind of splashes to create where the trees would be okay and I'm going to leave that to dry before I add in my next layer so I'm going to have the trunks of the trees coming down here but this bit remember is going to be some hazy background where the houses are. We're not going to have the outline of the houses. We're just going to resemble that with the texture and the colour. So I'm putting some oranges, some browns onto my brush. This is going to be quite watery. I am just splodging in some of the detail of where Could be like so. To add more detail for the leaves of this trees, I'm going to use my broad paintbrush and I'm going to have some greens and some yellows. On that. And I'm just going to flick. When you're flicking, be quite careful, be mindful of who's around. Add a bit more water if it's not as flicky. This is a really good way to add some of that texture. For building up. I'm not putting too much thought into that finer detail and blocking off down in this part which is the grass the park area just going to add in some extra bolder lines and just you can have the sponge if you find that easier But with water, you have to be a bit patient. Rather than working on that same area, we have to just let it dry before we add in some more detail. Okay. Again, I've got quite limited colours because when we go back to our mood boards, if you remember, it's quite limited, the colours which are used. So, again, I'm going to work back in this area and just to make it a bit more interesting, I'm just going to add some different colours. Just to give the illusion of cars, buildings. So this bit's quite urban compared to this part. Like so. And this part has had a bit of a chance to dry. I need to add an extra layer for my tree. So again, I'm just using my sponge because I really like the texture it creates. So just fill in some of them gaps. We have got a bit of blue because the sky's coming through. Think about the lighting as well. But we know trees are green. But we've also got bits of yellow in there oranges I'm 
all shining through. Again, this bit's quite wet, so I need to let that dry before I add in my next layer. Okay. Just add in, it could be the tree branch. I'm not putting too much detail into that. Okay. Because we are going to use our backgrounds to help us add our features. So whilst my background is still a little bit wet, we can use our paper towel. It's that technique where we were scrunching it up where it picks up the texture. And for this bit here, I'm just twisting my wrist to give some of that texture to the grass here. And I'm just doing it just a little bit, like so. I left that last layer to dry just for a few more minutes and we could just fill the page before we just add in that next layer. And you can see here, I've used a sponge just to darken up and add that layer in. And as I move to the middle ground, I have added a bit of a diffused layer. So again, we can't work out exactly what it is in this middle ground, but we could probably work out there are other houses, part of the trees, okay? And then as we come into the foreground, I've just added an extra dark shadow against the tree. And that is as dark as I want to have this background. 